you know where you are? This is Nollywood Pictures too. You are telling me that you are the owner of this magnificent plaza. <laughs> the plaza is mine, and as far as I'm concerned, that plaza is nothing. You know, I have an estate agent who is managing that plaza for me, and as I'm still working under my boots. Oh, I sincerely don't understand why you should still be working under your boots. You have made money to build this kind of, to put this kind of plaza in place. You, you shouldn't be working under your boots, no. Alasata, whatever thing that is revealed, as far as I'm concerned, is not. I am concerned with the future. I have a future with my boys, and that is the reason why I'm still working at Bagnet. <laughs> oh, look at me. I lived in Edo for years, and I have nothing. You see, I believe guys like you, who resolve never to leave this country, are far much better than us. Look at you, you are very rich. You know the reason why I made up my mind never to go to any part of Europe to live? Because I have pride, I have ego. You see, most of the things some of our guys do in Europe, all in the name of trying to survive, trying to get themselves to establish, I cannot do because I have pride. And then, importantly, I believe that there is no place like home. Because most of the things you can take for granted in your own country of birth, you cannot try that in another man's country. I don't know, I have lived here all my life and I can tell you that I don't have one reason to regret living here in my country. Oh, that's my blue color. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello, Clifford. Where are you? Sir, I'm at home. I see. I want you to come to my house by 9 o'clock. I have a very important thing to discuss with you. Okay, sir. I will be there by 9, sir. Nine. You are having a wonderful time with your boss. He's a gentleman. Mm. Perfect businessman and a strategist. Right? Mm. And I believe now he's asking me to come by nine. Yeah, there's something. <laughs> That's love. That's you know, so I think I think sincerely you need to be entertained. Because it is not easy to make up one's mind to leave Europe and come back to the country. There are many guys in Europe, I'm sure. <laughs> they have not been doing anything in Europe and they still don't have you know, the motivation to decide to come back. People like you that decided to come back should be congratulated and uh, <laughs> entertained. <laughs> Sir, so, when you called me, I was with a friend of mine I just came back from Europe. I actually showed him the picture of the complex and he went berserk. I came here because of the urgency of your call, sir. Is anything the matter, sir? Uh, Clifford. Sir. When wise men plan for life, they equally plan for death. But when fools plan for life, they don't remember that death will come. And that singular reason makes them fools. Sir, I am lost. Uh, Clifford, ah. if I happen to sleep tonight and fail to wake up, my business empire will suffer untold hardship. Especially. If you leave the entire businesses to be managed by my children, I therefore have to invite you here to ask for one favor. Sir, I feel honored. I'm listening, sir. Beautiful. If I happen to join my ancestors, or if such thing happens, I want you to make a promise 
that you will stay with my children and teach and guide them at least for one year so that they will learn the rudiments of the business, the ethics of the business before you leave them to manage it themselves. Can you do that for me? I'm sorry, sir, but I know we have discussed this very matter before. And to the very best of my ability, I am persuaded to say that I'm doing my best. Mm -hmm. So why are we discussing the same subject this night? Because I am worried. I have this feeling that if such thing happens, my business empire would collapse. Everything would scatter. Clifford, Sir. I want you to promise me that if such thing happens, that you would not leave my children alone to manage the entire affairs. Please, do that so that my worries will cease. I want to become happy once more. Can you do that for me? Please. I promise. Every single thing I have today, I owe to you. Including the business complex that has made me very popular and very relevant in this city. I owe everything to you. I promise you that if what you just said should happen, I am going to remain behind and teach your children the rudiments of business. I am not going anywhere. The company is mine. All right. See why I have always regarded you as my confidant. I have come to present myself before the spirits of the mountain. Mortals, live under the mercy of the mountains because the mountains can decide to erupt and destroy those that they want to destroy. I beg that the mountains keep, protect, and prosper Clifford as long as he is thinking of the sustenance of my legacy. I desire to live and live and live, but we live under the mercy of the mountain. I have lived all my life under the mercy of the mountains and pray this moment that the mountains will continue to guide and keep and protect my legacy. Well, Clifford, you have your own reasons. But if you ask me to say the death of your boats is good for you, I believe you will get a better baguette from the young man that runs the company. You know, the original plan was that I would be the one that would put the young man through. Because he has no business acumen. I remember I was with you the day the father called me and asked me to come and meet him in his house by nine. When I got there, the man pleaded with me that if it happens that he joins his ancestors, that I should stay behind for at least one year, during which period I would teach this young man the rudiments of business. Is he no longer the arrangement? No. <laughs> the young man is beginning to question authorities. The young man is beginning to make extremely unguided statements. He is beginning to poke his nose into areas where he's not even supposed to talk at all. And I can tell you as my very good friend, danger looms. How do you mean? You know, all businesses have their secrets. All successful companies the world over, they all have their secrets that they may not disclose to anybody. There were certain things I did with the father that kept that company running. And those were the things I was asked to teach this young man. And I was willing to teach him. And I am still willing to teach him. But this young man is not ready to learn. 
he is beginning to do things that suggest he is undermining my potentials and my capacities. If he forces me to leave that company, my friend, I can tell you that that company is going to die. I am not going to kill the company, no. But the company is going to die on its own, naturally. Sooner than anybody could expect, if I'm no longer in that company, that company is going to be deleted from the lexicon of companies that ever existed in this land. I feel so bad. That's bad. That's very bad. I feel so, so bad. You sent for me and I've been here for almost 12 minutes. You have not said anything to me. I don't understand what is going on, sir. Umar did my late father. He believed you were so important in this um, business empire. Dad is not in this but I am very, very important in the business empire. Up. I guess you are wrong to say that. As far as I'm concerned, in this company you are not important. I'm sorry, Kinsley, but do you understand the meaning of the statement you have just made? Yeah, exactly. I am not a dollar, I understand. Actually, I called you here to um, announce to you that your so called important services are no more needed. To that effect, I have prepared a check of 30 million naira to pay you off for all of the labor you put in under my late dad. Uh, if you go out, I have made the check available to the uh, secretary. You can pick up the 30 million and uh, have a nice day. You paid me off? Do you understand the implication of your action? I mean, did you ask questions at all? I don't need to ask questions. I know what I am doing. Okay? And perhaps uh, the 30 million is not enough for you. Fine, I can increase it. I need to show this life is mine. And, uh, I wanna run hello. Me my I wish way. you success in your I need to show business and business. No time to slide. I wanna run things. I wanna be in charge. Under the sun. I bring I know you called me back to give me the shake, is that right? Um, yes, I did. I would appreciate it if you help me sign here. Sabina, I am not going to say anything that will hurt you. Because I know you are a good African woman. But do me one favor. Go into that office and tell Kinsley that I said that men that are men do not speak evil of what they do not understand. Did you get what I'm saying here? Do you know how much is here? How much? 30 million now. Money is a lousy visitor. It can go anywhere and it can leave any time. This man that is standing here is not one of those lousy idiots that money can move. I am rejecting this check. Go in there and tell Kinsley that I said so. Vintage of um, him, I guess. Well, anyway, he didn't take the check, he just left. Sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> um, did he give you any clue why he refused to check? No, no, he didn't. 
But um, if you ask me, I think it was really wrong of you to have fired him. Excuse me. Do you know more than me? I was not trying to say that, so I'm sorry. You see, listen. I am in charge of this company. Okay? And I take decisions the way I want it. I decide who goes and I decide who stays. So Clifford or whatever it is called does not appear in my immediate program. So I fired him and he remains fired. I don't want to talk about this again. I'm oh. sorry. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. Um, do I have any other thing on my itinerary? Um, I'm afraid that you have actually done all the business for today. But if anything arises, I'll, I'll let you know. Excuse me. Mm, sorry. Um, come on. You cannot just walk away like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you actually want me to do something for you? Oh, I don't mind a kiss. Just to brighten my day. When are we going to stop this? When is this going to end? Do you realize that this is your father's office? And he was a great man? Look, anytime you try to touch me in this office, I feel really weird. I feel really bad. Like we're doing something wrong. I feel like your father's eyes are just somewhere looking at us. I'm really. Look, if I didn't know you, if I didn't know you, I would think you're naive. Who do you imagine my late dad looking at you? It sounds funny. Huh? Look, he's dead and uh, he's dead and he's gone. Good, good. I'm the one in charge right now, okay? As you can see, come on. Just emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Let me just have the opportunity of constantly, you know, exploring the woman in you. To do what it takes to survive Ignorance has a price A cost limit change Can turn things around And seek a giant shape There's a secret to every success There's a path every great man has to tread There's a secret to every venture that opens the door for well to flow. Eve, drink, be happy. Let's celebrate. What are we actually celebrating? I don't understand. <laughs> that young man has finally decided to ruin himself and destroy the company. I want us to celebrate his ruin. <laughs> I know how do you mean? How do you mean? Umar, his father, extracted a promise from me that I was to sit behind and teach him business. And I said, okay, I was ready to do just that. But today, Kingsley called me into his office, sat me down for almost 12 minutes, ignored me as if I was nobody. When he finally turned, do you know what he said? You are fired. That your services are no longer required. <laughs> he asked me to leave. <laughs> no, Clifford. Just tell me you're, you're, you're kidding. I don't understand. How, how do you mean? I'm not kidding. And I said that you know me so well that I don't joke with such things. I'm not kidding. I'm telling you what happened in the office today. That company is a company I know so well. Umar did his father a by self, not sure that company to its present status of national recognition. I know everything about that company. I'm not trying to be a braggart here, but I'm telling you the truth. That company is nothing without me. <laughs> I want us to celebrate because the guy is going. Now, can you explain everything to me? I want to understand you. You won't understand what I'm saying here? Can you imagine Kinsley? He said he approved a check of 30 million naira. He actually gave the check to the secretary and asked him to pick. 30 million, I just ignored the check there. I have bought up the check that place and I left. Clifford! Clifford! Ah! 
You would have taken the money, the 30 million naira is not a small money. How can you? Alasata, I agree with you. 30 million naira, yeah, that's almost $200,000. That's a whole lot of money, I agree with you. But I turned that money down on principle. I turned it down on ego. Ego, ego. ego. But let me, let me tell you, ego and ego, they are two different things. Ego is something ego cannot buy. I turned it down on principle. What, what? The money this guy is celebrating today is money that we not sure. We make the money, the father and myself. He doesn't even understand where the money came from, and he just rose up, woke up one day, yeah, you're fired. I want us to celebrate the guy because it calls for celebration. Hell no! Kingsley, that decision was wrong, I mean, you. I mean, how could you think of something like this? Listen, any other person, anybody in that company could be fired, but certainly not Clifford. Hey, come and shut up! What do you know? I was called back to Nigeria from Germany to run this company. So what right do you have to question me on, on how I run that company? What right? Huh? Look bro, fine. You were called back from Germany, but hey man, look at it. You're already making mistakes from the very beginning. Our father told me that Clifford was like the spinal cord of that company. He treated him like a freaking king. You, you can't just wake up and fire him without asking questions. No! Hey, look. I have a perfectly worked out program for that company. And Clifford doesn't fit into that program. Alright? I have done, done several things with him and I can tell you that guy is a nuisance. What? Yeah! A nuisance? That's right, you can quote me. Listen Kingsley, we were supposed to learn under this guy. That was our father's instructions. Alright, even if you wanted to find him, at least you should have allowed him for one year, one good year, so we could learn! Me? Learn? You mean after all of the international experiences I've acquired in business management? To sit down under that moron to learn? <laughs> to learn what? Hey, come on, man. You still reason like our old dad. And it's quite unfortunate, bro. It's quite unfortunate. Well, for me, it's a plus for one to reason like his father. Our father gave us a very clear instruction, and I insist that we follow it. Then go ahead and live in the past. For me, I am a man of the future. All right. Good. Man of the future, you go ahead and carve out your future. But I will not, and I repeat, I will not allow you to destroy our company. Young man. It's already late. Why, why don't you just go home and have some rest? Because I want to catch up with some sleep myself. Look at you. You're, you're sweating already. All over the place you're sweating. Go. Kinsley, if you had any respect for the dead, you would recall Clifford. Because our company is nothing and cannot survive without Clifford. Clifford is a dry wood. Nothing good comes out of a dry wood except ants. I don't need ants, neither do I need the wood itself. Can't you get it? Okay, so come on. Oh uh, yes, um, I call this meeting to inform you officially of uh, the readjustment that I've made in the management designations. Excuse me, sir. Madam Mabellas, what is it? Um, Clifford is not here. Will it not be proper to send for him? He should be part of this meeting. Are you finished? Yes, sir. I am true. You see? You see? That's why I have a problem with women. They lack discretion. Didn't I send a valid circular to you concerning this meeting? If I needed Clifford, could I have invited him? Hmm? Anyway, um, I um, it's part of the meeting anyway. Clifford um, is no longer with us. He's been relieved of his appointment. You are kidding us, ain't you? Uh, why, why would I be kidding you? Um, in that case, uh, you have been uh, shifted to his uh, designation. You now head the planning and strategy. And uh, Madam Mavellas, you have been uh, shifted to um, uh, public, public relations. And uh, Marcel, you are now in charge of the imports. Oh yeah, 
you're still in charge of the account. Every appointment and readjustment takes effect immediately. Um, any questions? Sorry, Mr. Chairman, but I... I don't think that's a wise decision. I feel honored to have been asked to take over Clifford's office, but... <laughs> Clifford is this company, and this company is Clifford. I asked you to ask questions, and what did you do? You're putting up opinion, which is very stupid and flawed to me. Any Ch question? Chairman, sir, I think Mr. Matthews is right. If our company must survive this present harsh economic environment, I think we need someone like Clifford around. Do you understand English at all? I said ask a question. Uh, Chairman, sir, I want to ask if this management team could be informed of the exact reason why Clifford of all people was fired. The reason why I fired Clifford is quite personal to me. It is not something that I will have to disclose in a general meeting like this. So, in the absence of uh, further deliberation, I have to take my leave. If you have any problem in your new portfolios, don't hesitate to come to my office. One at a time is how to do things. Every day we've got a challenge to unveil Keep your ears to the ground And learn lessons That is how to prosper Can you tell the root of all your problems? Can you explain the sudden turn? Follow now the voice of reason on my mind you didn't say anything concerning Clifford's sack. What do you want me to say? The young man opened the meeting by hitting so hard on me. Gosh! I decided to respect myself. Listen, I don't know what you think, but I sincerely believe this company has no future without Clifford. Well, I know Clifford to be powerful and adventurous, but I sincerely don't believe we cannot cope without him. I mean, he is not God, he's not a superhuman. Is that what you think? Anyway, you can afford to talk anyhow because you're a woman. But I tell you, very soon, sooner than you could ever anticipate, you begin to see things for yourself. I'll see you later. What do you mean? Look, no, you need to recall Clifford before other companies take it. Because our father will be sick and his grave because of this, this decision of yours. Come on, why is everybody talking about Clifford as if Clifford is the, is the messiah of this company? Why? Look, if everybody's eye is closed, can't you see yourself? Can't you open your eyes and see that this guy is a crook? What? He's a crook, my friend. Cl Clifford a crook? Why? Why, 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 why would you say that? Oh, why do I say that? Yeah. So you've not seen his business complex? You've not seen it? If that guy was as good as you claim, he would not have stolen so much money from our dad to go and erect that intimidating company that he has right now. Please, let's not argue over that matter again. Dad, you know, the rumor everywhere is that Clifford, your manager, is a crook. And why must you listen to rumors? By the way, who told you that uh, Clifford is a crook? Who? Well, I'm sorry, Dad, but you don't have to bother yourself with the identities of the people that spoke. Uh, for me, uh, you know, Dad, I'm, I'm beginning to believe that Clifford just might be stealing from us. Why would you say that? Dad? Dad, have you seen his complex? Huh? That complex is one of the best in Cardinal Estate. I mean, a plot of land there is worth over about a hundred million naira. Yes. I mean, where the hell, where on earth will Clifford get that kind of money to buy land there and build that intimidating edifice? Where? Now, listen to me, son. 
One thing you must learn today is not to dabble into what you don't know. I know everything about that uh, complex. As a matter of fact, I commissioned that complex for him. So I can tell you that he is not a crook. He's not. Why is why you staring at me? As if I'm talking trash, why are you staring at me? <laughs> Bro, you know I how... have told you this guy is a crook and it was in our best interest to fire him. Look, bro, you know what your problem is? You just got back from Germany. So because of that, you lack adequate information and that's why you make erroneous conclusions. I don't get that. What do you mean by erroneous conclusions? All right, fine. You know, I once confronted our father about the same situation that bothers you today. And you know what he told me? He told me that he knew everything about that complex. As a matter of fact, he commissioned the complex himself. So you shouldn't rely on mere assumptions to make decisive decisions. You shouldn't! I resent that. We can talk from now till tomorrow. Clifford is fired and he's fired. And that's period. You know what our father used to tell me? That men who are men do not see blindness and open their eyes to it. Those are business proverbs to me. Just said what I said. If he's fired, he's fired. If you like it, if you don't like it, so sorry. Chief Laz, I am not so impressed with your visage. I mean, your comportment. In my capacity as your landlord, I have come for us to interact. Why would you wear this gloomy face, Chief Laz? Clifford, I want you to remember that. In the last one year, we have credited your account to the tune of 160 million naira. And that is what you made from the complex. That is less of a professional fee of 10% and all that payable charges to the government. Shiflas, do you really think that I am ignorant of the deposits you are making in my account? Let me tell you, every single money you pay into my account, I know of. And I have not come here for us to discuss figures. You see, there are new developments in Omari Transparency Limited where you know I work. Now, there are new challenges that I want to face in my life as a man. And that's the reason why I'm here. You are confusing me. What are these new developments in Omari Transparency? They are not things I would like to discuss with you, Shiflas. At least for now. As I said, there are new challenges I want to face in my own life. And for me to face these new challenges, I need an office. A place where I can establish, where I can operate from. Specifically, I have come to ask you if you can provide me with a suite that I'm going to transform into an office. I am still going to pay you exactly what is supposed to be paid because I wouldn't want to have a confusion in the accounting. I will pay you exactly what others are paying, but I need to see it that I'm going to transform into an office. Can I have one, Chief Lars? Presently, there is no vacant suit in the complex, um, but you are the owner of the property. We can make provision. How soon would I be expecting you to give me feedback? Well, less than two days, I will call you on phone. Two days? Yeah. I like that. Machi, you look so worried. What could be the matter? I don't understand myself. All four trucks I sent to Kaduna could not be traced. How do you mean? Each of those trucks contained goods worth 800 million naira. They left for Kaduna four days ago, which means they were supposed to have arrived Kaduna two days back. But as I'm speaking with you now, they are nowhere to be found. They are not in Kaduna and they are not on the roads. 
so they suddenly disappeared. That's the dilemma. I don't know how to explain this. Have you talked to Kinsley about this? How do I... How do I possibly tell him about this? How do I explain it? Do you know what? What? Go to his office and tell him exactly what happened. Go. Go. This is... I'm still on it, sir. There are a lot of um, technical lines in the insurance bit, but I'm trying to put everything in place. Okay, it's all right. And then, um, go and call me Matthew. I've been trying to intercom, it's not going through. Okay, um, I'll call immediately. Are you telling me that four trucks, a whole four trucks loaded with expensive diamonds just disappeared? Huh? Do you take me for a fool or something? No, sir. Listen, sir. I am shocked. Thank you. Save your shock and answer my question. Did you send anybody to Kaduna to verify? Exactly. And what? I did that and they told me the trucks did not get to Kaduna. Then, Matthew, you've got to trace those trucks. Okay? Sir? You've got to trace those trucks. We are not talking about packets of matches here. We are talking about trucks. Loaded trucks. What billions of naira and I cannot lose it. Alright? They can't just disappear. You better go and trace those trucks before I descend on you. Matthew, come on, get out. Listen. Get out of my office, man! I need to show this life is mine. I wanna run things. I'm sorry, Master. But sincerely speaking, I don't know anything about importation. See, I know. Well, you just have to advise me on what to do. The money they're asking is outrageous. How much are they asking? They're asking for extra $3.5 million after I had wired $12 million to them. This is difficult for me. This was part of the things Clifford did with great ease. Did they mention why they're asking for more money? Yes, they did. They gave very cheap reasons. Their reasons are very cheap. My problem now is how to present this matter to Mr. Kingsley. Well, go to his office and tell him exactly what they said. <laughs> you think it's that easy? If I do, he will con conclude that I'm incompetent. And that is what I'm trying to avoid. Mr. Kinsley, let me remind you that this is an insurance company and we are allergic to noise. So go straight and tell me what your problem is. Or you leave me no option than to send you out. Are you talking to me? Exactly. Learn how to behave yourself in a corporate environment. Or I will do what I just said. Look, I am an international businessman. And I know the workings of insurance. Okay? Your company cannot just treat my company with levity. I have the capacity to run down this company. Okay? And get you down on your knees. Stop threatening. You're shouting again. Go straight and tell me what the problem is. Look, four trucks. Four trucks that we sent to Kaduna to deliver goods worth 3.2 billion naira suddenly disappeared and could not be traced. Your company duly insured the goods and the trucks. I am here to pick up the indemnity. Four trucks disappeared? Untraceable? <laughs> Mr. Kinsley, that can hardly be true. Are you... Are you saying I'm talking trash? No, is that what you're saying? You think I'm talking trash? You think I'm talking trash? That's the document. Evidence. Now, the essence of insurance policy is to restore folks back to their position, and that's why I'm here. When did this happen? They were supposed to have gotten their goods three days ago. No goods, no trucks. My manager told me that. Well, um, Mr. Kinsley, uh, we will investigate this. Really, there is little or nothing we can do without investigation. Miss Kalachi, that investigation had better start right away because danger is looming for your company. I swear to God, if your company does not do anything about it, I will run down 
this company. And I mean it. Stop threatening Good. Mr. Kinsley. It's okay. This company is too big for you. And there is nothing you can do to bring us down. That rubbish you just said right now, was it directed at me? No, wait a minute. Was it directed at me? We'll see. Between here and Kaduna. You know, Mom, I I don't know why this is happening. I feel so cold lately each time I see documents that bear uh, Umari Transvality Limited. And this time around that their claims are gonna be so massive. What do we do? We will not pay that claim. This is the fourth claim from that company in the last six months. If they bring any more businesses, don't touch it. Okay. This company was established to manage risk and not to take unnecessary risk. Not to anymore. Ask Henrietta to bring me the five from months. Consider it done. Thank you. I want you to recall Clifford. I made some investigations and it's still available. All these things won't be happening if Clifford were to be here with us. Marcel, let this be the last time I will call you and you start this homely on Clifford. I warn you for the last time. I am an international man. I've wine and dined with shakers of Germany. I've shaken hands with presidents. Okay? I have vomited Clifford and I am not going back on my vomit. If Clifford is ready to come back to this company, let him go and reapply. Period. Sir, you and I know Clifford is the last person that wants to reapply for this job. I advise we call him before others take him. We are sinking. Hey, shut up. Shut up. Look, I called you here to know when our goods from Venice is arriving, not to tell me bullshit about Clifford. I sent a memo, sir. Didn't you see it? I, I actually sent the memo since yesterday. What kind of memo? Did I tell you to send me a memo? Wait, what memo? Memo about what? Why did you send me the memo? What did I say when I made a readjustment in the management responsibilities? Did I not make it clear that anybody that's got a problem should come to me? and not send a memo? Why did you have to send me a memo when I was here all through yesterday? Why did you send a memo? It was too tough for me to say, sir, so I reduced everything into a memo and sent to you. Come on, this is crazy. This is crazy. Exactly what I think, sir. In fact, the whole management staff of that company are all insane. Look. You know what you will do? Go and make a letter. Hmm? Make a letter and order them to return our money. Okay? And then make a notification that we are disappointed with their action. I'll do exactly that, sir. Good. In fact, the letter will be ready in 30 minutes. Matthew, the only reason why I decided to give you audience is because you're my brother. If not that you're my brother, I would never allow you to come into my living room. You know that yourself. Thank you very much. I appreciate your consideration. And I also came to you because you are my brother. 
Clifford, look, we are dying. The company is sinking by the day. The things we don't find difficult to do are the things you did with so much ease when you were with us. I'm asking you to come back, please. Let's, let's, let's just find a way of turning things around. Matthew, I want to be very sincere with you. This man sitting down here can never, ever come back to your company. You cannot say that, Clifford. Look, I'm pleading with you not because of the madman from Germany, no. I came here because, because of our late boss, Ozu Madi. That man was a wonderful man. He was such a good man. We cannot just sit down and watch Please, him. please, please, Matthew. When I promised our late boss, Ozu Madi, that I was not going to leave that company, I was very serious. I was determined to sit back and not share the company. Because up to tomorrow, I still see the company as my company. Good. But I was fired. I was fired by an idiot that just came back from Germany and found himself at the head of affairs of a multi-billion naira company. A company that he doesn't even know how it started. Listen to me, Matthew. Some of the metaphysical agencies that were responsible for the success we had in that company have remained on service for months. It simply means that the company must go under and there are no two ways about it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wait, sorry. I... Are you trying to tell me that the problem we're facing in the company now has something to do with rituals? Not rituals. Science. Science of progression. Go around the whole world, you will see the same science. All companies that are progressing, they have this science. Okay? I'm telling you, the problem that you have in that company has nothing to do with this physical approach that you are adopting now. Like all of you are doing there. The problem of that company is more spiritual than physical. If you guys want to make that company to be on the path of progress again, then you guys must settle down for spiritual business. Sorry, Clifford, you, like you're not getting me. I'm talking about the company. I don't understand what you mean by spiritual business. Go back to Kingsley and tell him what I said. If actually he is interested in the resurrection of that company, then he must settle down for spiritual business, spiritual exercise. Go back to Kinsley and tell him that I said so. Okay. Matthew, I've sent for you four times today. You were not in your office. Your phone was switched off. I was wondering, what is the matter with you? I went to see Clifford concerning the problems that's been facing this office in the last one year. <sighs> Things are getting worse by the day. And I had no choice than to go and see Clifford. He however told me something that captured my interest. And who gave you the impetus? Who gave you the impetus to go and discuss this company with Clifford? Do I need permission to go discuss it when it's obvious we're sinking deeper and deeper each passing day? So because I gave you the opportunity of becoming the head of planning and strategy, that is why you now went discussing the sinking of this company with somebody that I fired, huh? No. Nobody's planning the sinking of the company. We're rather planning its resurrection. And Clifford suggested a possible resurrection. A spiritual exercise must be done. Oh, really? Yes. Matthew, you are fired. And this is with immediate effect. You can go back to that, your accomplice, and together, you guys can plan your resurrection. If I see you in this compound anymore, within the next 10 minutes, I'll kill you. And I mean it. So, you're going to kill me because I'm walking towards the survival of your company? Now get, I'm done. Get out. Okay. I don't need your efforts anymore. Okay. That's okay, fine. Get out. Have a nice day. Thank you. I am the managing director here and I run it the way I want it. Ignorance has a price. A costly mistake can turn things around. And seek a giant shape. There's a secret to every success. 
There's a path every great man has to tread. There's a secret to every venture. I think the management team of that company in Venice are all crazy. Those men have gone insane. I send them the letter you asked me to send to them and this is the reply they sent to me. They sent you this crap? Yes, sir. Did you see the last statement on that letter? It's a corporate decision that stands irrevocable. I can't believe this. What, what is this? You mean somebody is with my money? And I want my money back and he's telling me he cannot, I cannot get my money. And he's calling the decision what? Irrevocable. It sounds strange. Sir, I want to believe these people had this letter written down, signed it, and were waiting for us to send, a, uh, to send them our own letter. And immediately we did, they fixed the date on this letter and sent it back to us. If not, how would they have gotten the six management staff of the company to sign this letter and reply us all in one day? That is hardly possible, sir. You've got that wrong. You're just being speculative there. The businessmen in Europe, they are not sluggish like our own people here. So anything can happen under 24 hours. It's possible. I think our best option now is to send Matthew over to Venice to go and argue this thing out over with them. Matthew is no longer with us. Matthew has been fired. Fired. Since when, sir? 40 minutes ago. Sir, why? Why are you asking me that question? I decide who goes and I decide who stays. He has gone. So you go outside, find something to do, use your head. There's a secret to every success. There's a path every great man has to tread. There's a secret to every venture that opens the door. Oh well, to flow. It's funny. You see, I, I can't understand. That young man looks harmless. How could he fire two management officials in 13 months? He's an idiot, that's why. It baffles me myself. I really haven't, haven't understood it. You know, he, he just called me into his office and then he told me, you're fired. I thought he was joking. The next thing he did was walk me out of his office. You see, I understand he was rusticated from a Jama University. He behaves like a drug addict. And you know, addicts are always leftists. You understand? No, I said, I think I have to disagree immediately. Drug addict, yes, but if you say leftist, I disagree immediately. Because if we have to go by the real meaning of the doctrine of leftism as a political maxim, then Kensley cannot be said to be a leftist. Because leftists are progressive in nature. Kensley is not progressive, he's just an idiot. I'm sorry to say this, but he's an idiot, very serious fundamental idiot. Sincerely speaking, that company is going to die, and if care is not taken, the resurrection is going to be reduced to a piece of meat. <laughs> sorry, I, I don't understand what you mean by piece of meat. Piece of meat? Miss Kaluchi, why the useless order? What order? Your men refused my offers. And when I asked them, they told me the order came from above. And I was wondering, where is the above? Who is the above? I know that's the only above I've got here. Now tell me, how could you tell them to turn down my offer? Mr. Kinsley, do you know how much we have paid your company in claims? in the last one year, 1.8 billion naira, that's how much. Tell me, is that not complete madness? Now, wait a minute. Are you by chance calling my company a mad company? Or are you referring to me as mad? I have not called your company a mad company. Neither did I say that you're the mad one. Our position is that in granting your company insurance cover, that is high risk. And our company is not willing to cover such risk. 
That sounds so serious to me. Because as far as I'm concerned, every serious businessman goes for insurance. And that's why I'm here to be insured. And there is no responsible insurance company that will insure something that is known to be high risk. Uh, look, Miss Kalucci, that is why you are in existence, okay? To insure people. And that's why I need to be insured. Well, ours is just one of the companies out there. There are a lot of offices, so you try some other offices. We are no longer doing any more businesses with you. That is our decision. And that decision is irrevocable. Wait a minute. Did I hear you right? What did you just say? Irrevocable. Oh my god. So you are also using that word irrevocable on me? Wait a minute. Is that the way you guys do business in Africa? Huh? And by the way, who, who, who told you to use that word on me? Irrevocable. Who told you to use that? No, I'm asking you. Who told you? Huh? I'll be back. There's something that you want to tell me. Vital, maybe. I'm, I'm all yes. Well, it may be strange to others, but you surely know that there's nothing that happens in this company that I don't know. Okay. I think I am lost. <sighs> okay. What exactly are we talking about? Apart from secretary boss relationship, you and Kesley have another relationship. I beg your pardon? You don't have to get angry because I've not discussed this issue with anybody. But you should know that I'm a woman. And such things hardly happen without my knowledge. You are constantly sleeping with Kesley. Excuse me! I'm so disappointed in you. That you actually talk about me with the other managers. I pleaded with you not to get angry and that's exactly what you're doing. But I am angry. I'm not bothered with your private life and I can still tell him that I've never discussed you with anybody. I'm concerned with the company. We are going down with master speed and I want you to call Kinsley to order. That's all. So what is there that I can tell the boss that you cannot tell the boss? You owe it to all the boss to guide his son. He is making a lot of management mistakes and it would not be out of place if you call him to order. The labor market is saturated with people looking for employment that is not in existence. If this company collapses, we shall be thrown into the saturated labor market. I want you to think about this. Fine. I will talk to the boss. I'm not promising anything. Nothing. I'll try my best. But meanwhile, how did you get to know about the boss now? Sorry I got late. I was trying to send a new fax to the company in Venice. What do you mean by sending a fax to Venice? So the, the three fax lines are not going through. I've not even sent the fax. Simple. Why don't you just call the phone and tell them to on their fax machine? Exactly what I did, sir. But uh, a lady with a very poor English speak the call and said I was uh, true to the Babylonian embassy. Babylonian embassy? Yes, sir. I checked the number. I knew I died the right number. I redialed it, but like the fax machine, the telephone lines went dead. This is serious. Are they on the run or what? I don't know, sir. But... Uh, the signals are dangerous. Anyway, that's by the way. Um, apart from double H insurance, do you know any other insurance company that can settle claims promptly? I'm talking to human beings here, am I not? <coughs> we, we are sorry, sir. We don't know much about insurance. You cannot answer that question, sir. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? So I surrounded myself with Nikon Poops. Bunch of ideal minds who cannot think. And that's why my company is tearing apart. Huh? 
you are all fired. Right now, go to your offices, pick up your bags and whatever you have and get out of my company. Right now, before I pump bullets into your, into your stomachs. Get out! You fired all of us? And if you don't leave here in the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you exactly why I was rusticated from the university. If you don't do that, get out of my office, my friends. Get out! I'll credit your account. Get out. I'll credit your account. Get out. Come on. I don't need mediocre managers like, like you people. Before our father died, he charged me never to mention this. But Kingsley, if you push me to the wall, I repeat, if you push me to the wall, I'll have no other option but to voice out the root of the man. Get out of my house! Don't push me. Get out! 